Today we are continuing our Gospel and Disney series. <clears throat> For those of you who receive and read the Weekly Word, you'll know that we've extended the Gospel and Disney series by a couple of weeks. Um, uh, not because of its success, not because of anything other than I needed to fill in a couple of weeks to get me all the way to Advent and Christmas. So uh, I thought the easiest way to do that would be to add a couple of Disney movies. <clears throat> We're going to try and be theme appropriate. So um, for the last Sunday in October, we're going to do Coco, which is about uh, the Day of the Dead. And, oh, I just drew a blank. What was the other one? Hercules! Oh, yes, Hercules. He's not theme-oriented at all. He's just the son of a god, and it's a pretty easy one for me to hit out of the park. So, uh, today we are going to talk about Pocahontas. Uh, Pocahontas is uh, uh, a, a Disney movie, but she is also a real character. She is a real person that lived in our world and affected the future of what would become the United States of America. So uh, she's a Native American who uh, lived on the east coast of the United States near Jamestown, Virginia, and she interacted with the settlers who arrived from England. Um, Disney, of course, Disney-fies her story. Her story, story is, is uh, she's important to our history, but her impact was made simply in about 10 or 12 years. So they figure that Pocahontas was between the ages of 12 and 14 when the people arrived in Jamestown, and they believe that she passed away by the time she was 22. So everything that occurred, occurred over about a 10 or 12 year period in her life. It's hard to believe that. If you don't know the story, the real story of Pocahontas, I encourage you to go and read about it. Um, but today we are strictly uh, working with Disney and Disney's adaptation of Pocahontas. So um, I'm becoming very popular at home as uh, I watch these different Disney uh, movies and uh, take up valuable family TV time that could be spent on other things. Um, it's really exciting for a teenage male, a uh, young adult, to watch Pocahontas princess movies. <laughs> he loves it. Um, that's sarcasm. He doesn't really like it. He was like, oh, why do we have to watch this? I said, because it's for work. And he said, ugh, you need to get a different job, Dad. <laughs> so Pocahontas is uh, 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 an older uh, Disney princess film. I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not real. Uh, there's, there's much older ones than that. I was a child and actually went to the movie theater and saw the original Bambi at the movie theater. Um, so I know how far Disney goes back. I understand that this isn't really that old. But for modern kids, Pocahontas is one of those ones that they might not know. But we know it, I know it. Uh, I had a, a daughter at the time who loved to watch princess movies, and so Pocahontas was one of her favorites because she was a princess who didn't fall in line. She didn't do exactly what she was told. So uh, three scriptures today. If I don't cover each scripture today, I think Dan Best might be upset with me. I'm not exactly sure because he had to read all three up here. So I want to make sure that I hit all three scriptures. It was a test? Oh, yeah, yeah, for you. It was a test for you, yeah, yeah. So uh, first scripture today uh, is uh, scripture about choices. So um, this, this uh, particular scripture is about making a good choice. And uh, I don't know uh, how many of you have seen the movie Pocahontas, but... 
But early on in the movie, uh, the main character, Pocahontas, is, is um, contemplating her life, which has been laid out before her. So her, her father, who is the chief of the village, has uh, picked out her life for her, has chosen her future mate, um, has um, seen how she can be a leader in their village and be an important person in their society. And she thinks that she has a different path to follow. And uh, they use it uh, in the movie. They talk about um, uh, life being like a river and how there are sometimes the river divides and you have to make a choice. You have to choose which way to go. Um, and how things in our world are just around the river bend. That's the name of the song. It's going through my head. I'm still not going to sing any of these Disney songs. Just because I've heard myself singing on recording, and I don't like it at all. But here she is, the, the, the heroine of the story, and um, she has decisions to make. We all have decisions to make. And when you really know the age of, 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 of the true Pocahontas character to realize that she made a real decision in her real life to leave her people and go to England in real life to be a representative of her people, that was a huge decision for such a young person to make. And I can just hear, um, if, she, if she had parents in real life that were still alive, I can just hear them saying, why would you go and do this? For many of us as adults with children, well, we know exactly what we would do for our children. We, when, when they face a decision, we know exactly what we would decide and so we try and push that on our children. Um, as a people who live in a society where people have choices, sometimes it's hard as parents to see our children make choices that are different than what we would want. Um, let, let, me, let me give you a simple example. Um, when my son was born, I had his whole life planned out for him. My first son, David, when he was born, I had his whole life planned out for him. He was going to be a high school football star. He was going to get a college scholarship so that I didn't have to pay for his college education. He was uh, going to go on and get an education. Uh, I didn't care what field he went into. I didn't have that chosen for him in my head but I knew that he was going to be successful in what he did. Instead, I got somebody who got the short end of the genetics in my family. He, he is only five foot seven. Never played a down of football. But I love him. And I think the life that he chose for himself is great. You see, sometimes... As parents, we can meddle in the lives of our children, or maybe as grandparents, meddling in the lives of our grandchildren. And the reality is, what I want each of my children to do is I want each of my children to do what the Scripture says, which is to go to God and ask what it is that God would have them do and God would have them be. And so uh, after that first child, I began to learn with each successive child that I can have an opinion, but the reality is, as long as my children are being wise and thinking through and asking God for help, I can't complain about what it is that they do or who it is that they become. And that's a difficult thing sometimes for parents. And... The reality is that God calls us to seek God to help with the decisions in our lives. Uh, Pocahontas goes to her spiritual advisor, Mother Willow, 
Um, we need to go to our spiritual advisor, go to God and the Holy Spirit and ask. And we need to be listening to the people around us who love us because sometimes they can see things that we don't see. But the reality is we sometimes have to step aside to let our children be who they really are. Um, the next scripture was the scripture that is different in the bulletin than what it was. Uh, uh, Matthew uh, 25. Um, can you throw that one up there? This is always a test. Uh, this is uh, Jesus uh, uh, um, kind of having a conversation with people and it's this whole idea of who are we supposed to help? So, you know, Jesus says, I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. Um, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And, and the people that he's talking to ask him the question, when? When? When were you naked? When were you hungry? When were you thirsty? We... We know you. We are around you. We, didn't, we haven't seen you. And Jesus says to them, when you have done that to the least of these, you have also done it to me. Christ calls us to be compassionate on those who are in need. We see that in the movie. There's a, a point in the movie um, when uh, John Smith and Pocahontas meet. Our hero and our heroine of the story, and um, he uh, dramatically jumps through uh, a waterfall and he points his gun at her. Um, Disney would have us believe that he is taken aback by her beauty, and um, but really, there's a decision to be made when two new groups of people come together. Um, the choices are they could run away from one another, so they could avoid one another. One of the choices is they could have conflict with one another. He could have pulled the trigger. That would have been the beginning of hostility, and it would have continued on. Or... The other choice is to learn about one another, to reach out a hand of friendship, to learn a person's name. And that's what we see occur there between John Smith and Pocahontas. And there's this whole conversation that occurs. And at one point, John Smith calls her a savage in the movie. And she realizes that he means that in a derogatory way. So how many times have we as people looked at another group of people and made a decision about them by how they look or how they live? I grew up in a small community, and uh, I think I have said here before, uh, people of color were not a normal part of my everyday life. I didn't know anything about people of color. Um, very little. Uh, only what I saw on TV. I didn't truly have an understanding of it. Um, the story I want to tell you about today, I don't think I've ever told it here. Um, I want to tell you about somebody whose name is George Price, George Price III to be exact. Um, he is somebody that I worked with when I was in college. He wasn't in college at the time. He was working full-time for the company that I worked for. I, um, I, I filled paper and toner and copiers around the campus libraries at Wayne State University for years. That's how I earned the money to pay for college. I went to college part-time. I worked full-time, and I paid my way as I went. George Price III was one of many people that I worked with in that job. George Price was the first person who was African American that I worked with directly. I directly worked with George. George was a great guy. 
He was young, and he was a little reckless, and um, we would occasionally do things together. And I said, hey, you should come with me to this thing that I was going to on the weekend, and it was in the suburbs, and he said, no, I'm not going there. And I said, why not? He said, because I'm black. And I said, George, that doesn't matter. You're a great guy. You're a good person. It'll be fine. He said, no, you don't understand. And I said, well, how am I ever going to understand unless you explain it to me? And he said, I'm not going to explain it to you. He said, I'm going to show it to you. And so he took me, and we went in his car from the city of Detroit, and we went to a suburb of Detroit, south of Detroit. We went to Lincoln Park, Michigan. In Lincoln Park, Michigan, there was a J.C. Penney store. A J.C. Penney, he said, all right, I want you to walk in the door 40 feet behind me, and I want you to watch and see what happens to me. Now, Lincoln Park is a community of mixed-race people. So Lincoln Park has Hispanic people, Lincoln Park has African-American people, Lincoln Park has Arabic people, a few, and Lincoln Park has white people. And so as George walked in through the doors at J.C. Penney, and I was walking behind him, I immediately realized that somebody was following George around the store. And so he was looking at some clothing, and he was actually purchasing something. And about halfway through, I went up to him and I said, who is that person following you? He said, that's security. Security followed him only because he was young and male and black as he walked through the store. He went and he purchased what he was purchasing and we left the store. Now, being, <laughs> being the naive country bumpkin that I was, I wanted to go in the store and talk to somebody about it. But he understood how his world worked and that he wasn't always welcome in certain places. And it was the first time that I became aware of people deciding about other people because of the color of their skin or because of their religion. Um, my son lives in Dearborn Heights, Michigan, which is one of the places in America that has the highest per capita of Islamic people in the world. Uh, in the United States, I mean, in the United States. It is the city that is the most dense with people of the religion of Islam. There was a point in our country when we hated people because of the color of their skin. And there are still people who believe that. It didn't matter whether their skin was brown or yellow or black. It didn't matter what religion it was. It was if they were different, people hated them because they were different. Pocahontas and John Smith in this movie have a choice to make upon that first meeting. And they choose to get to know one another. That was one of the greatest things. The education that I received at Wayne State University wasn't about English or math or science or history. It was really about social interaction. I got to meet a diversity of people. I worked with people who were Islamic in, 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 uh, the, in the different areas of uh, Wayne State University, I got to work with people who were African American. I got to work with people who were Hispanic. And in that, I got to know that those people are like you and I. They have all the same problems that you and I have, plus the problem of the color of their skin. Because people look at them and make decisions about them based upon their religion or the color of their skin. And it's very frustrating to me, even to this day, when I hear people talk about them. It burns my biscuit, as my grandmother would say. It makes me angry. And I think that Disney is trying to teach us, and I think Christ is trying to teach us, when he talks about 
feeding those who are hungry, clothing those who are naked, giving something to drink to those who are thirsty. Our job is to love people right where they're at. In Israel, today, right now, people are fighting over the same issue they have been fighting about for generations. And the reality is, it's stupidity. We have to be able to allow others who are different than us to exist. That's what our country has been. We call ourselves the melting pot, but, but I tell you what, every generation we fight really hard to keep the next group of people out. You know, we tried to keep the Irish out. We tried to keep the Chinese out. We tried to keep, well, we forced the African Americans here, but then when they were set free, we tried to relegate them to second-class citizens. And we do that with Hispanics, we do that with Islamics, we do that with people who are different than we are, who we see ourselves as being. And I think this movie challenges us, uh, us on that, that we need to not just look at the color of someone's skin or how it is that they live, but we need to get to know who that person is. Find out what their name is. Find out what their mom and dad are like. Find out what their kids are like. When we do that, we find out that we have more things in common than we have things that separate us. And when we do that, it's harder for us to treat them negatively and we treat them with more respect. Finally, today I want to look at the last scripture that we had up there. Um, this whole idea uh, at the end of the movie where Pocahontas and John Smith know that this conflict is coming between the settlers and the Native Americans, and that there's going to be war. And that, what is it that they could possibly do? So, John Smith and Pocahontas go to this spiritual leader, uh, Mother Willow again, and she talks about just a drop, a single drop, creates a ripple effect. And that that single drop the ripple will spread wider and wider and wider until it covers everything that is there, everything that is in that um, pond or river or even just a bowl of water. If it's smooth enough and it's glassy enough, if you put a single drop in, it will cover the whole area. The wave will continue to spread outwards. They are saying, what can we do as two young people to change the situation between these two large groups. And what Mother Willow is saying to them is, you go make a difference in your world. And so we have a responsibility as Christians, according to this scripture, to not just pray for those who we are friends with, but to pray for our enemies to pray for those people who persecute us, to pray for those people who hate us because of who we are. You can make a difference. Um, Mother Teresa did not do what she did to create a worldwide movement. She did it to bring comfort and peace to one person who was dying. And in doing what God called her to do, that ripple spread. Um, we see this in many different ways. <laughs> when, uh, when they talked to Rosa Parks and they said to her, why didn't you move? She said, because I was tired. She didn't, she didn't realize the ripple effect. She just knew that what was happening was wrong, and she was fed up with it. And she was one person who stood up, who made a difference. You can make a difference in your world. You can make that change 
for peace. What can I do? Israel and Hamas are at war again. You can pray. Not only pray for the people of Israel, but pray for the people of Hamas as well. Pray that both sides would see that God does not want them to do this. Islam is a faith that is based on God of the Old Testament. And their faith calls them to be a people of peace, just like our faith calls us to be a people of peace. If we, both sides, would do what God has called us to do, there would be no war. There would be peace. We are called as people of God to pray for our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Because that one drop, that one person, can make a difference. You can affect change in your world by standing up when you hear something that's wrong. You can affect our world in just a few weeks by voting. Now, I'm not going to tell you which way to vote on any of the issues. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for as a candidate. But I will say to you, look at it. Pray to God about it and make a decision and your vote can affect our world. You can make a difference by who you elect to put in office, by whether you say yes or no on an issue. You, a single person, can make a difference just simply by praying about and voting how you think God would have you to go and how God would have you to vote. You can make a difference in our world with God's help. Pocahontas is such a simple movie, and it is a Disney movie that does not have a happy ending. If you've never seen it, I invite you to watch it. Uh, there is no happy wedding. There is no uh, grand ball or wedding. It is two people uh, being separated. And I encourage you to look at Pocahontas in the real world, study her history, and find out what kind of difference she made in her world. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, we give thanks. Help us to be the agents of change in our world. Help us to choose a path of love. Help us to see that we can make a difference. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Go forth from this place and be the change that God has called us to be. Amen.